Let's take it back to 2007. The first Apple iPhone was introduced, George W. Bush was in power, and the US housing market bubble was just about to burst, causing a worldwide recession. Ah, the good old days. And we were riding around on 26 inch wheels. That's 2007 giant anthem. Fast forward to the present day, we've got Donald Trump, we've got the iPhone X, and we've got Bitcoin. What a time to be alive. And look, we've got bigger wheels as well. So this is the 2018 giant anthem. We've been invited by partners at Giant to check out the new bike, and I want to see just how far we've come in the last 11 years. Please don't let me down, Giant. So the Giant Anthem was actually introduced in 2006, one year before this 2007 model. And it was helped in development from their two pro riders, Adam Craig and Rune Hoydile. Do you remember him? He was one of only two riders to win a World Cup cross country and downhill race. Uh, leave your answers for the other rider in the comment section down below. Love to know your guesses. Uh, also, Adam Craig was a very good crossover rider coming from the cross country world to enduro. And that actually describes this bike very well. It was a bit of a pioneer back in the days for being one of the very first full suspension cross country bikes. So the Anthem was introduced with this Maestro suspension design that had already been on the longer travel bikes, the Trance and the Rain since 2004. So it features four pivots and two linkages that gives it that floating pivot design. That's designed to reduce the pedal bobs, give you a compliant, efficient and fast bike. It also still features on the brand new bike. So what was cutting edge technology back in 2007? Well, you get this fluid formed aluminium frame. See those sort of funky profiles of those tubes are made by high pressure water. It's actually anodized rather than painted to save weight. It only weighs 5.3 pounds this frame. So super light back in the day. Uh, you've got that integrated headset that I think looks really up to date to be fair. It's got 27 gears, so you've got three chainings up front and what looks like a really small ratio cassette by modern standards now on the back. It's got 26 inch wheels, which I think now look really old fashioned. Also quick releases front and rear look pretty scary to me nowadays. But what about the geometry? Well, the wheelbase was short, the head angle was steep, 72 degrees, and that's a 90 mil stem on there. But this really was that aggressive cross country geometry of the day. So I think it's time I take it for a spin. Take a trip down memory lane. God bless you all. God bless America. Absolutely loads of gears to choose from on this bike. Feels a bit weird using your finger on the old sh shifters rather than using your thumb for everything. Also, that front neck doesn't shift that well, but loads of gears. Suspension feels really good, really tracks the ground. Loads of traction through that rear tire as well. And this climb is actually pretty bumpy. Really aggressive front geometry, old cross country bike. Feels like my bars are almost in line with the front axle. So really good for climbs. Got a funny feeling it's not gonna feel so good for going down the hills. That was fun, but I think it's time for the modern bike. Oh, okay, instantly the bike feels long and low compared to the old one. And the brakes are amazing. So light, the action on the actual lever, and they just stop you instantly. Right, onto the climb. Already the bars just look so clean compared to the old bike. I've just got the right shifter and then I've got the lockout under the bar on the left and that's it. Okay, let's get up this climb. So just take a look at the 2018 bike. It looks just so much more modern. It's carbon fiber everywhere. That Maestro linkage is now carbon. You've got carbon frame, bar, stem, seat post, saddle, even the cranks. And brands always talk about making their new bikes lighter and stiffer. 
you know, put that over 11 years and that really does make a big difference to how the bike feels. It feels super planted, really direct, all those stiffness things like you've got the boost hubs, stiff wheels, it does feel really, really direct to the trail. So what else really stands out as the modern touches on this bike? Well, for me, it's that 1x12 SRAM Eagle drivetrain, that huge 1050 cassette. Got rid of that front neck and all those chains completely simplified everything. You've got this super light, high-grade composite front and rear end. You've also got a trunnion mount shock on here, so the bearings actually sit in that Maestro linkage, stiffens everything up. A big difference well, you've got that remote lockout that runs the fork and the rear shock on this bike, so it goes from fully locked out to the 90 mil travel on the rear, 100 up front, super active. Makes a big difference to the old bike where the fork and the shock, although they do work well, they do feel really sloppy when compared to these units and that lockout on the bar. What about the geometry? Well, it's long and low, which really does suit these 29 inch wheels. You've got a 69 degree head angle, which is still quite steep, but I do think that suits the bigger wheels as well. The big difference for me is the bar and stem combination you now get. So it's a 70 mil stem and you've got a 780 mil wide bar. So short and wide gives greater control. We've got a tapered head tube on the front of this bike, so one and one half inches to one and one eighth at the top. I've talked about this already, but that boost spacing together with that bolt through makes a big difference. You've got a wider fork and rear end on this bike, plus the bolt through. I find it really hard now to look back at the QRs and think that was a better idea. Obviously the bolt through is so much stiffer and it's just as easy to take your wheels out. I've got carbon rims on this bike as well. It makes a big difference when we're talking about the big wheels, so 29 inch wheels, carbon rims are super stiff but also you've got that 27 mil width on them. So it gives you a nice profile on that tire. The bike is tubeless, which is pretty much standard nowadays, but it does make a big difference when we're talking about 29 inch wheels, reducing that rotating mass feels great. It's also really oversized. This part of the frame down by the BB, it's got a 92 mil bottom bracket in there. Lots of carbon going around here, really just to reduce those pedaling forces and any flex in the bike. But also you can ride these cross country bikes so aggressively now, you need a bike that is nice and stiff. So what has changed in the last 11 years? Well, almost everything really, you know, the materials, the geometries, the wheel sizes. Actually that bike, the old bike is a large frame. This one is a medium, but just look at the size difference. Um, going back to the old bike, it actually it's a credit to its former owner. It's absolutely immaculate. Everything works really well on this bike. If this was my only bike now, I'd be happy enough. It rides fine. It's only when I jumped on the new bike where you really feel, it feels like a really premium bike. It's almost like jumping from your very first car when you're 16, 10 years later, jumping in a brand new car. Everything just feels great. Everything works better. It feels faster and it feels way more confidence inspiring. I know I've said that already, but on the old bike, it feels fine. But when you ride technical stuff, it starts to feel dodgy pretty quick with that steep head angle the long stem, the brakes that don't work quite as well. Jump on this bike, it feels great. It feels like I'm really gonna struggle to fall off it. I shouldn't say that, because I'll fall off any bike, but it does feel like it's that big a difference. So I'm old enough to think that 2007 isn't retro. It's just a little bit old. But if you wanna see a proper retro versus modern video, click up there. And I'd love to hear your comments. If you're riding a slightly older bike, let us know down below if you're still loving it, or if you're thinking about upgrading it to a brand new one. Give us a thumbs up if you like these style of videos.